Hello everyone and welcome back to Clan Generator, where last time Glow Clan began to recover from the awful shadow attack on their camp, with the apprentices bringing new hope to the clan. But unfortunately, as is the case every six moons, two cats must die so that the shadows don't attack again. It is obvious that Pheasant Zoom must fill one of these spots, but it isn't obvious who should occupy the other one. Celio, Frisk, and Tadpole Crackle, I determined last time, were the ones most likely to be chosen. But I forgot to put up a vote for you guys, so I'm just gonna have to do this the old-fashioned way, by the dice. Actually, now that I'm looking at the rules of the challenge, it looks like Frisk and Tadpole Crackle might be safe, as they are both currently sick or injured. I don't know if shivering is that bad. After all, Tadpole Crackle can still go on patrol. Frisk has a running nose, not serious in any capacity either, although it could develop into something worse, maybe. I still think I'm gonna roll for this. We're gonna roll from 1 to 6, going with that higher numbers are better. If you manage to get a higher number than another cat, you defeat them in battle. Celio is getting a 2. That's that's pretty bad. I, I don't know if uh, Celio will be able to get past that. Oh dear, well, Frisk got a 1. Even worse luck. And Tadpole Crackle easily defeats them both with a 4. I feel like Frisk and Celia, both not really knowing each other very well, would probably attack each other first and fight. Celia's troublesome, Frisk is fierce, so these two would fight while Tadpole Crackle stands off to the side, and then as she sees Frisk not being able to hold her ground, perhaps she'd try and jump in then, but at that point, but I feel like Frith would not want her to get involved. She cares for Tadpole Crackle a lot and doesn't want to see the young cat get hurt on her account. And also, I feel like Frisk is far too fierce and maybe a little proud to accept that she would need help. In any case, Pheasant Zoom and Frisk will go into the darkness right off the bat. Poor Pheasant Zoom is attacked by a group of cavern shadows. I don't see this going well. Oof. Yikes. Pheasant Zoom is dead. That sacrifice is successful, so I guess that's a decent thing for the clan, but rip Pheasant Zoom, you were you were one of my favorites. And meanwhile, Frisk is having a little better luck and manages to succeed in her patrol so frisk comes back so again the sacrifice was only partially successful this move egret paw needs to be given a mentor i feel like Cressheart is a good choice he is very responsible he's the deputy and Dash Star doesn't want to take on another apprentice himself, and he doesn't want to give her to anybody who themselves could be sacrificed. Dash Star, I'm sure, is taking care of scolding Webpaw here. Cressheart feels intrigued by a recent challenge and is strategizing solutions, perhaps getting in on that brainstorming session Dash Star and Slim Noise had last time. Shellpaw gave some advice to Frisk, which is quite interesting. Celio plays pranks on the other warriors and blames it on the apprentices, of course. Frisk spent last night stressing over possible disasters. Caterpillar Tuff thinks they're going crazy. Temple Crack wants to be chosen as deputy. That is so sad. <laughs> that is really sad. Poor Molepaw. Now he no longer has his mentor. Clearpaw almost choked on prey. Egretpaw is gossiping. Pheasantpaw is worried others are judging them. Webpaw is grateful to Sun Noise for their treatment. Ghostpaw sneaks off to the two-leg place. Oh. Tawnypaw hopes to go on the same patrol as Egretpaw. Going on patrol with his two apprentices, Cressheart came across a small cavern shadow. Well, 
I I think Press Heart is a bit ambitious and also really responsible. I don't know if Cress Heart would put Eager Paw in danger here. I kind of feel like Cress Heart would proceed. Hmm, I'm really gonna regret this. Well, at least nothing really bad happened. The shadow just kind of sat there watching us, not really doing anything. I don't really know why I sent Webpaw out with Sunrise, but the young cat apparently had a vision. But it's a nonsensical one. Perhaps it was just a dream. Interesting. A disagreement. And Caterpillar Tuft manages to skillfully smooth it over. Celio also thinks they had a vision. Well, there's no resolution there. Was it real? Was it not? Who knows? Tadpole Crackle is no longer shivering. Sun Noise is picking themselves up up out of their nest and beginning the day with a fresh conviction in his heart. And Frisk's running nose is gone. Molepaw is also feeling warm and not chilly anymore. And Webpaw is feeling as though the world is less dull. Ghostpaw just up and died to a snake. What? What? Uh, well, I guess there could be snakes down in these caves. And, unfortunately, we had to sit vigil for both Pheasant Soup and Ghost Paw. And, to top it all off, Marigold went bad. So, it's an unfortunate moon for Glow Clan. Meanwhile, Caterpillar Tuff thinks Sun Noise isn't considerate of others. Tapple Crackle thinks Pheasant Paw is very helpful, in contrast. Sun Noise wishes they could get their pelt to shine like Tiny Paw. Sun Noise checks up on Eager Paw. Dashstar asks Celio how they're doing. Dashstar, Celio, and Clearpaw had a nice talk while eating. Crestheart thinks about how lucky they are to have Pheasantpaw as a friend. Crestheart complains Shillpaw never does anything, meanwhile. Frisk is sharpening their claws near Pheasantpaw. And Frisk appreciates Eagerpaw telling them about that embarrassing feather. Molepaw is glad to have a clanmate like Tawnypaw. Clearpaw thinks about how Frisk is always reliable. Pheasantpaw saw Tawnypaw being rude. Pheasantpaw, Mopaw, and Dashtar had a nice talk. Shellpaw is surprised Ghostpaw's life isn't as easy as they thought it was. Aww, just before Ghostpaw died, that's really sad. Celio is sneaking out of camp with apprentices and thinks Eagerpaw is very helpful. Ghostpaw and Mopaw had happily swapped prey. Or Ghostpaw. Poor Molepaw. Dash Star saw the cat just sitting there next to a cavern shadow. What is wrong with that cat? How are they not getting killed? Hmm. Crestheart assesses the apprentices. Sun Noise senses Bud Rise is nearby. That is concerning. That is very concerning. Shellpaw is still feeling damp from falling into the creek. Celio wants to get to know Tadpole Crackle better. Frisk plays a prank on Shellpaw. Maybe the reason Shellpaw fell in that creek. Caterpillar Tuft almost got lost in the darkness. Well, that isn't good. Tadpole Crackle is making up songs and encouraging others to join in. That is adorable. Molepaw wonders how Webpaw is doing. Clearpaw thinks about something they saw in the darkness that intrigued them. Egretpaw is grateful to Shellpaw. Pheasantpaw hopes Crestheart notices how well the training is going. Webpaw is not allowed to leave camp without asking first. And Tawnypaw is mourning Ghostpaw. Aww. Poor baby. Ghostpaw was Webpaw's only living littermate. And they were the children of Scorched Chest and Caterpillar Tuft. Poor Caterpillar Tuft has lost all of his kids except one. Greenflip was whispering in the ear of Ghostpaw. Huh. Was she trying to get Ghostpaw killed by the snake? Or was she trying to warn Ghostpaw about the snake? Or perhaps about something else? Was the snake sent by the Dark Forest? Or perhaps was it sent by Starkland? In an effort to keep Ghostpaw from telling others something Greenfoot told them. Budrise, meanwhile, is watching Frisk with malice in their eyes. Hmm, that is interesting. 
Perhaps he tried to get Frisk, but somehow Greenflip was able to stop it. Tallfern thought they heard the voice of a loved one. And in fact, Tallfern might be right, because Pheasant Zoom has just entered the place of no stars. She was supposed to be there last minute, I forgot. So there, there Pheasant Zoom goes. Oh, poor baby. Well, now they have one of their siblings with them again, but I doubt that's much comfort. Meanwhile, life in the clan must go on. Another vision. We're being warned about something. If only we could figure out what. Sun noise. I don't know. We just can't figure it out. Nice. Tawny Pie is learning to be a good fighter. I just realized that now that Celio has lost their apprentice, they should be given a new one, and I know just who. I feel like these two will make an interesting pair, so there we go. These four have made up a border patrol, and Pleasant Pa has started telling a story of their ancestors to keep every cat entertained. The rocky terrain is too rough to keep up a story, so eventually Pheasant Pa peters out. Aw, poor Pheasant Pa, at least you tried. Ooh, an interaction with another clan. Well, we'll proceed, and unfortunately... Ooh, Clearpaw's aggression is obvious to the other patrol as the apprentice pins their ears. While they don't remark on the hostility, your patrol gets the sense that the rude behavior has been noted. Ooh, that is bad. I think... Clearpaw's gonna get a lecture. Oh, oh no, Sun Noise has left us. Sun Noise lasted for a really long time. He outlived his first apprentice and I think was like 150 moons old. Or even more. I'll have to check on him in Star Clan, but Cleom dislocated a joint and got a running nose. So, thankfully, Sun Noise is the only loss to this loss this moon. But unfortunately, his apprentice will struggle to learn the ways of a medicine cat without him. Caterpillar Tuft thinks Clearpaw is helpful. Tadpole Crackler is always happy to be around Webpaw. Sun Noise didn't get a chance to say hi to Caterpillar Tuft. Sun Noise covered for Celio on something minor. Dash Star calls to Celio to catch them a fat mouse on their next patrol. Cressart gave a gift to Dashdar, but Dashdar turned up his nose at the offering. Ooh. Yeah, these two have had a rocky relationship for a while. Cressart is grooming Clearpaw. Frisk appreciates Caterpillar Tuft always seeming to ask how they're doing. Frisk knows the advice Webpaw gave them will be helpful. Interesting. And Molepaw is being condescending towards Frisk all day long? Oh dear. Also, Clearpaw having a fight with Frisk. And Frisk abandoned Egretpaw in a time of need. Perhaps Egretpaw was asking about tips for the day when she would have to fight for her life against her own clanmates. And Frisk did not want to talk about that. Pheasantpaw goes to Dashstar to ask for wisdom. Some very interesting things happening here. Pheasantpaw, Cressheart, and Shellpaw took a sun bath together. Shellpaw talked with Celio. Celio learns a helpful skill from Cressheart. Wishes they could get their pelt to shine like Tawnypaw. Webpaw approves of Egretpaw's recent efforts, and Tawnypaw appreciates Webpaw letting them know about a feather. I feel like with all the tension that's been going on in this relationship, and Cressheart having done his duty, having given kits to the clan, I feel like this relationship is kind of done for. Cressheart does not feel appreciated or loved anymore by Dash Star, if he ever did. And I think Cressheart wants to take a stand for himself and maybe pursue his own happiness for once. So we're going to have him break it off. It's over. And just like that, it's back to having no romantic like. It's like it never happened. Kind of. Meanwhile, I do want to have another pair in the clan. I think Caterpillar Tuft and Tadpole Crackle might be a good option. They're both of similar age. They've known each other since they were apprentices. And I, in my head canon, believe Caterpillar Tuft always had a crush on Tadpole Crackle. 
But I think I'm going to roll for if Tadpole Crackle agrees to be mates. Because, yeah, why not? And getting a 4 with 4, 5, 6 being yes, these two are going to try a relationship themselves. Alright, here they go. They're starting off. Now they both have one heart to start with, and we'll see if they can make that work. Meanwhile, while we're talking about mates, you know what I gotta do over here in the Dark Forest. Oh, you compare Dark Forest cats to Starcloud cats? That is amazing. I want to do that. Anyway, we're gonna have Green Flip and Pheasant Zoom officially be mates here in the Dark Forest. Now that we're done rearranging or arranging our cat's love lives, <laughs> let's look at what they're thinking. Dash Star is doubting shell possibilities. Perhaps he thinks the young cat can't learn everything he needs on his own without a mentor. Oh, and poor Shellpaw wants Dash Star to notice them. He's like, I can do this. Please believe in me. Frisk is wanting to get to know Molepaw better, whereas Caterpillar Tuft wants to know Eager Paw better. Oh, Tadpole Crackle is missing sun noise. Molepaw, meanwhile, has his adult sprite now and is eavesdropping on Dash Star. Clearpaw, also with her adult sprite, is eavesdropping on Webpaw. Eagerpaw wants to be made a warrior before Clearpaw. That is absolutely hilariously competitive. Pheasantpaw, meanwhile, is playing a prank on poor Clearpaw because everyone's targeting Clearpaw today. Webpaw regrets not eating the bird on the fresh kill pile. And Tawnypaw hopes Cressheart notices how well their training is going. He wants to impress the deputy. Also, just realized my settings weren't set up for this clan, so now everything is the way I want it to be. Unnoise lived to 165 moons, about what I thought. If only Scorched Chest had survived, we wouldn't have a poor apprentice stranded without a mentor. Since Eagerpa is also without a mentor this moon, we're just gonna send them together. And, oh my gosh, it's adorable. They have been challenged to an herb gathering competition. And Shellpaw and Eagerpaw do not find any herbs. Oh, oh, that would have been so good if it would have worked out. Perhaps Shellpaw is starting to have doubts about being a medicine cat apprentice. Oh, it's this interaction again. We found a kitty pet who is stuck. Their wing is under a rock. And we are going to proceed. Unfortunately, we did not succeed. Falling over, paws waving helplessly in the air, and somehow making the situation even worse, the patrol passes the idiotic kitty pet by, leaving them to their stupidity while they focus on their actual task. Did I click not proceed? I think we clicked proceed, but our patrol just did not care. Perhaps they figured... That a cat who comes from the darkness, who looks like that, maybe is a cavern shadow themselves. Or perhaps they figure it's better them than us. We should just let the shadows consume them. And another encounter with a scarecrow. <laughs> well, Pheasant Paw went to go investigate and reports back with. Her findings. The first message of Green Flip's that is overtly evil. Perhaps Green Flip wants to play her end game. And of course, Bud Rise is still just up to no good, like always. Tall Fern is hungry. And Pheasant Zoom maybe is looking for revenge. Havoc thinks of a message to send. And Thornkit is proud of who Shellpaw has become. Caterpillar Tuft heroically tossed a snake out of camp before it could bite someone. We don't want a repeat of what happened to Ghostpaw. Molepaw stands before the leader. They should be happier, but as they're given their warrior name, Mole Watcher, they cast a look to the crowd. They wish that Pheasant Zoom could be there to see them. Poor Molepaw. Mole Watcher, I should say. In honor of their hard work. Which is really cool. Tawnypaw has excelled at every task placed before them. Despite their young age, they are now ready to be a warrior. They are given the name Tawny Knoll, honoring their caution. And the herbs have been scattered. 
leaving poor Shell Pie feeling even more dejected. Caterpillar Top talks with Celia. Tadpole Cracker thinks Caterpillar... Tadpole Crackle thinks Caterpillar Top is very helpful. Dash Star and Shell Paw swap prey. Dash Star, Egret Paw, and Celia took a sun bath. Cress Heart and Tadpole Crackle enjoy each other's company. Pheasant Paw asks Frisk to speak up while chatting together. Frisk shares a joke about a neighboring clam with Shell Paw. Mole Watcher is complaining Pheasant Paw never does anything helpful. Clear Paw caught Frisk complaining about them behind their back. Egret Paw is surprised by Tawny Paw being helpful. Pheasant Paw comes up with a plan to sneak out of camp with Chris Hart. Shell Paw had a disagreement with Pheasant Paw. Celio turned to Clear Paw in a time of need, but Clear Paw abandoned them. Celio, Dash Star, and Caterpillar Top had a nice talk while eating. Celio and Clear Paw were sparring. Web Paw surprises Caterpillar Top with something nice. And Tawny Knoll is jealous of prey. Dash Star wants to go on patrol with Egret Paw. Cress Heart is considering innovative strategies to earn more recognition. Shell Paw plays a prank on Celio. He's never struck me as the prank-making type, but uh, I guess Celio should get some of their own medicine. Celio has managed to start a prank war with other cats now, playing pranks on them, them continuing to pr play pranks on other cats. It'll sweep the whole clan. Hmm, an interesting thought from Frisk, thinking about their old life. Caterpillar Tuft bats at his tail. Tadpole Crackle apparently wants to go to Leopard Clan. Mole Watcher is having a good day. Tawny Knoll feels bad about never being invited to share tongues. Clearpaw is asking Frisk for some advice. And Egerpaw feels proud of himself for doing so well in training today. Pheasant Paw can see their mentor is busy, and Webpaw thinks Clearpaw will make a fine warrior. Interesting, a Meadow Clan patrol. Let's try not to make them angry at us this time, huh, guys? And the patrol leader from Meadow Clan gives Dash Star a respectful nod, which he returns. A mutual feeling of respect has been fostered. Well, that's good. All right, Frisk is showing several apprentices and a newly made warrior, the Border and points out some good spots to keep watch on. Frisk is super proud of the apprentices. They are all attentive and asking great questions about Glow Clan and their relations to other clans. Good, good. Egret Paw definitely needed that boost in experience. As they wander towards the sparring area for a training session, Tadpole Crackle stops Caterpillar Tuft and asks for their advice for something. As Caterpillar Tuft nods along sympathetically, Tadpole Crackle describes a recent stupid decision they made. They're not looking to be absolved, but they ask Caterpillar Tuft what they do in Tadpole Crackle's place in order to fix it, and Caterpillar Tuft feels a lot of pride to be the cat Tadpole Crackle chooses to confide in. That, that right there is a good base for a relationship. These two, I feel like, are going to get along just fine. Perhaps Shell Paul will do better with uh, the deputy accompanying. And the deputy's apprentice. They go looking for... Poppy seeds. But unfortunately, the wind has gotten the poppy seeds as well as the herbs in our stores. Tadpole Crackle announced they are expecting kits. Yes! We are getting some more kits here in Glow Clan, and that relationship seems to be doing quite well. Dash Star rests their muzzle on Clear Daisy's head and declares them to be a full warrior of Glow Clan, honoring their boldness. Their training is done already. Pheasant Pot isn't exactly sure if she's ready to be a warrior, as the leader claims her to be. Her voice trembles when she takes her vow. As she's renamed to Pheasant Pot in honor of vigilance, she can't help but wonder if this is something that truly describes her. Oh, poor Pheasant Back. Shell Paw got a splinter. <laughs> and. Celio's running nose only seems to be getting worse, although Celio somehow has recovered from their dislocated joint. And Web Lion is now a full warrior of Glow Clan, honoring their adaptability. Oh, these two really are meant to be together. Look at that. Caterpillar Tuft thinks Tavo Crackle is the most beautiful cat in the clan. Dash Star thinks Web Paw was nice to them today. Press Heart caught Mo Watcher complaining behind their back about them. Cressheart avoids running into any cat, but Tadpole Crackle interrupts their peaceful silence. 
Frisk is sharing the latest gossip they hold over the they heard over the border with Tadville Crackle. Frisk shared an embarrassing story about Pheasant Paw, who is now Pheasant Back. Poor Pheasant Back, they already have low self esteem. Frisk had a disagreement with Dash Star again over kits. What is going on there? Mo Watcher talks with Tadpole Crackle. Claire Daisy and Frisk joke about how bad the other clans smell. Egret Palm covered for Tadpole Crackle. Covered for t Caterpillar Tuft on something minor. Pheasant Back always thought Press Her had it all figured out, so she's surprised when Press Her asks for help. Wow, the deputy is going to this young warrior asking for help. That is pretty humble of him. Shell Paw finds the way Caterpillar Tuft acts increasingly uncomfortable. Celio called Web Paw the wrong name. Celio wants to spend more time with Web Paw, meanwhile. Web Lion thinks Caterpillar Tuft was nice to them today. And Tawny Knoll appreciates how Pheasant Back always seems to ask how they're doing. Dash Star eavesdrops on Tawny Knoll. Cress Heart craves the taste of shrew. Shell Paw now has his adult sprite. He's careful, interested in clan history, and a restless sleeper still. Celio wonders how Clear Daisy is doing. Frisk wants to get to know Tadpole Crackle better. Caterpillar Tuft wonders how Celio is doing. Tadpole Crackle spotted cavern shadows near the camp today. Mole Watcher also spotted some cavern shadows. He has aged up to be a grumpy, trusted advisor. Interestingly enough, both Pheasant Zoom and Tadpole Crackle had an influence on him to become better at providing insight. Daisy became fierce and a good camp keeper. Dash Star influenced them to be more likely to break rules that don't suit them, stay collected, and use words over teeth and claws. Interesting. So one thing that seems to kind of contradict the others but at the same time, I guess, kind of makes sense. Poor Pheasant Back, who was spooked by an owl last night and is too embarrassed to tell anyone, is still insecure, like her namesake, and is a beloved kit setter and clever. Press her influence them to be more likely to make their own rules, put others at ease, e adapt easily, and be slow to anger. Hmm, interesting. I feel like these definitely Pheasant Back took on more. And. Cressor also helped them become better at caring for kittens. I'm very interested in how this um, skills thing works. So I guess the mentor that you choose can really help them develop that skill. But Cressor's skill isn't caring for kits. It's having steady paws and being clever. So I don't know exactly how that translates. Tawny Knoll is currently daydreaming about being a warrior in Tiger Clan. Very interesting. And was influenced by their mentor to behave erratically and to heed their inner compass. So at least one good thing. They were honored for their caution when they graduated. He is also lonesome and has a natural intuition and cleverness. Webline giggles about clan drama with friends. He is a childish cat with unnatural senses, which were helped along by his mentor's guidance. Egret Pa was having a hunting contest with Pheasant Back. I feel like with Celio now sick with White Cough, her apprentice should be given another mentor. It is only fair. I feel like Frisk being a good teacher, being fierce, and having just trained her own apprentice to be a warrior a moon early would be a good choice. We are going to send them on the hunting contest, and Pheasant Beck, I guess, wins the hunting contest. Nice. Ooh, Caterpillar Tuft eyes shell paws. The younger cat approaches. The prospect of being bossed around by an apprentice is downright humiliating, and the warrior is not looking forward to this experience. Shellpaw has a grand time, directing Caterpillar Tuft around with their tail to various herb patches. Caterpillar Tuft grumbles beneath their breath, making sure the apprentice knows how frustrated they are, but does as he's told, not wanting to risk getting in trouble. Wow, that is just a very awkward situation to be in. Poor Shellpaw is just trying to do his best. Oh dear, well, I think we should probably proceed here. And again, the shadow just stares at us. It is not afraid of us. And it will not budge, but it doesn't attack either. 
Oh, this patrol again. Well, let's proceed. But we keep ignoring the kitty pet. That is not good. To be fair, our bad reputation with outsiders is probably merited. After all, we make a habit of uh, sacrificing our members to the darkness every six moons, so... It is the moon before the offering. And Cab Crackle is thinking they'll have a large letter. I certainly hope so. And Egret Paw has finally become a warrior, being called Egret Flood and celebrated for their loyalty. Shellpaw survived a vicious eagle attack with the claw marks to prove it. Meanwhile, Shellpaw's small cut from before has healed up nicely. Tawny Knoll was seen arguing with the loner. Interesting. Caterpillar Tuft saw Tawny Knoll being rude. Tadpole Crackle picked out the best piece of prey to share with Egret Paw. Dash Star finds a bit of fluff that smells like Celio and adds it to their nest. I really think Dash Star has a crush on Celio. Cressheart appreciates Shellpaw telling them they had a feather stuck to their face. Cressheart asks Tanya about something complicated and regrets it almost immediately. Frisk shares prey with Caterpillar Tuft. Frisk and Shellpaw actually got along better today. Mole Watcher sighs loudly every time Dash Star does anything on patrol. Clear Daisy ignores Frisk. Perhaps knowing that, well, Frisk probably won't be here much longer. Egret Flood had a huge argument with Frisk. Pheasant Beck is surprised by Donnie Knoll being thoughtful. Shellpaw feels safe with Caterpillar Tuft around. Celio apologized to Shellpaw. Celio and Clear Daisy got along better today. Web Lion bristles after being scolded by Cressheart. And Tawny Knoll offers to groom a hard-to-reach place for Tadpole Crackle. Dash Star wants to get to know Celio better. Cress Heart is feeling sassy today. Shellpaw plays a prank on Tadpole Crackle, even while being hurt by the eagle. Celio tries to set a good example for younger cats. Frisk wistfully thinks of their past life while trying to nap. Tadpole Crackle is happily chasing a butterfly. Clear Daisy is feeling sassy today. Egret Flood saw another cavern shadow. Pheasant Bark is sparring with some clanmates. Tawny Knoll is also sparring, I guess, with Pheasant Back. Webline hopes Dash Star notices their improvement. Conquer Clan sent has strayed into our territory. And we found a hopelessly lost apprentice who we assisted in getting back home. Again, two kits. I wonder what would happen if we antagonized. Could we steal the kits? No, we want to keep up good relations with the clan. I do want to try it, though. And we are going to go ahead and bring the kits back to Conquer Clan. Again, more interactions with Conquer Clan. And our relations with Conquer Clan have improved greatly through all these interactions. Greenflip is sending a message to one of the cats still living. Very interesting. I wonder who that could be. Butterize has no regrets. Tallfern is thinking about walking in the dreams of Egret Paw. And Pheasant Zoom watches Mole Watcher with Malice. That is interesting. Mole Watcher is your former apprentice. Perhaps Pheasant Zoom wants Mole Watcher to come join her. Or perhaps it's Malice at the things that might be done to this apprentice. I don't think Pheasant Zoom's the one who would hold a grudge against her apprentice who never did anything wrong to her. Scorch Chest is telling other Star Clan cats stories of Glow Clan's beginning. Of course, she wasn't there for this herself. She's just telling stories that were passed down to her, which is funny because there's cats a lot older than her here. Oh, something's gonna happen. That has to do with Pheasant Back. Havoc is hoping to meet with a medicine cat. Ghost Paw watches over Dash Star. And Thorn K is hoping to visit Tawny Knoll. It is the moon of the offering. And Caterpillar Tuft leapt from a rock, but didn't quite land right. I feel like Caterpillar Tuft might have done that on purpose, so that he's sure that he won't be an option in the offering. Not really sure, though. But him and Tadpole Crackle at least had a litter of four kits. This will all be worth it, Tadpole Crackle promises herself, as the pains of afterbirth rock her exhausted and bleeding body. Secret Flood was seen touching noses with someone from a large clan. What a scandalous thing to do. Egret Flood also overdid their last sparring session. Pheasant Back has gotten White Cough, but Celio has recovered from White Cough. 
however, also overdid their last sparring session. Some kind of blight inflicted the herbs tours. Poor Shelpa never gets a break. Tadpole Crackle is glad to have a clanmate like Clear Daisy. Dashter gives Tawny Knoll a particularly hard task, expecting them to fail. And called Flip Kit the wrong name. Cressheart had a huge argument with a kit. Cressheart, Hazel Kit, and Dashter had a nice talk. Shellpa is upset after spending the time with Grisprit's bad attitude. Frisk reassures Tadpole Crackle about something that has been bothering them. Frisk wishes they could get their belt to shine like clear daisies. I also feel like this is about the coming fight. Will they have to fight again? Will Tadpole Crackle still be at risk of being chosen? Even with her newborn kits? Flip Kit mews hello to Mo Watcher, but they look pretty, pretty glum still. Eh, yeah, you have a right to be glowing this moon. Clear Daisy doesn't notice Caterpillar to have twitching whiskers. Egret Flood finds the way Hazel Kit acts uncomfortable. Peasant Back had a spar with Flip Kit over a piece of prey. What in the world? And went for a nice walk with Tawny Knoll. Shell Paw reassures Peasant Back about something that's bothering her. Celio and Egret Flood enjoy each other's company. Celio is amazed at how skilled Tabble Crackle is. Webline talks with Cressheart, and Tony Knoll admires Webline's dedication. Dash Star is wondering about what's really out there in the darkness, and beyond it. Cressheart assigns cats to the hunting patrol. Shellpaw plays a prank on Tony Knoll. Celio tries to set a good example for younger cats. Frisk also does. Caterpillar Tuft picks burrs from his pelt. Tabble Crackle pounced on a stray leaf. Mole Watcher saw some cavern shadows around. Clear Daisy is playing a prank on Cressheart. Egret Flood tries to emulate the leader's body language when talking to younger cats. Pheasant Back is playing a prank on Swamp Kit. Tawny Knoll wants to get to know Celio better. Web Lion saw some wandering two legs today. And Hazel Kit, a little male who is charming, snuggles up to the belly of Tapple Crackle. Milk Kit is a little troublesome female. Flip Kit is a lonesome female, and Swamp Kit is a nervous little guy. As far as the vote goes, Web Lion and Egret Flood are at the bottom, or top, I suppose, of the list, being plus four and plus five, respectively, which is bad. Clear Daisy, Celio, and Frisk are all in the plus three range. However, as has happened in the past, a cat can volunteer to be sent into the darkness. So we are going to add Clear Daisy and Frisk into the mix as possible volunteers to volunteer in their places. So they will be in the vote as well. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Glow Clan. Please vote by liking the cats, which you would most like to lose in the replies to my pinned comment below. And I will see you all next time.